What's up, Bruins fans? Johnny Gamma here, joined by Greg Fulton of the men's soccer team. It is uh, soccer season once again here at Bob Jones University, and we're excited to get the 2021 season underway. Coach, thanks for the time this morning. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. We, uh, let's talk a little bit about last year, of course. Last year, a, a memorable season in a lot of ways for us. We were able to capture our first region championship in pro program history uh, and just had a lot of things going for us. I think the stat was like we outscored our region opponents somewhere in the neighborhood of 48 to zero. Didn't allow a region goal the whole year, and that continued into the regional tournament. Uh, came up a little bit short in, in uh, the national tournament, and I know as I've talked to you during the offseason, a thing that you, you always are saying is we have some unfinished business coming into this year, but let's go back to last year. What, what was it about that team that was, that was making us um, so dominant offensively, but also so dominant defensively? You know, we added, if you look at, you know, two years ago to last year, we added a lot of key pieces into our starting 11 that really energized the team going forward. I think we've, we've, Two years ago, we really figured out defensively how we wanted to play. Um, we weren't perfect, but we, we did start to solidify our defending. But then uh, adding Mario, adding some other key freshmen last year really energized us forward. Uh, we moved Vic, uh, Victor Oladipo higher up the field, um, which helped us offensively. He was our leading goal scorer. So, you know, we, we really... I think just started to look forward um, on the field instead of just trying to move the ball around the back. And I think that was huge for us. Um, you know, obviously in a shortened season, um, we were hoping to get more games, but, you know, we were able to do some pretty cool things in the games that we did get. And uh, it kind of led to some, some pretty good moments for us. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about that COVID season last year, because again, it's, it's something everybody had to deal with. Some programs decided, hey, we're not going to play a season at all. We're going to push it off to the spring, those kinds of things. But as a coach, I feel like it does change your philosophy a little bit of coaching and your preparation when you're only playing one game a week, maybe. Um, sometimes it goes 10 days, 12 days between a game. So how did you guys have to, in practice, you know, keep your guys mentally prepared to every time they step on the field, let's, you know, let's go? Yeah, that's that's the toughest thing. I mean, it, it's impossible for a program to start in August and stay at, you know, a level 10 from August to November. So you kind of ride the wave a little bit. Uh, you prep for big games and big moments. Um, but in training, the nice thing is we added a lot of uh, players last year. So we had a, a roster of 35. So you know, there's a lot of competition internally that we really pushed on the guys and we really wanted them um, to, to compete with each other as brothers. You know, we wanted them to leave the field as brothers, but at the end of the day, it was anybody's, anybody's spot on the field, you know, every session. So that kept them pushing and, and we really didn't have too many lulls during training. So that, that helped us a lot in a season, which like you said, I mean, one game a week top. So yeah, absolutely. And, and as I said, you know, we went to the national tournament as the number one seed, ended up getting upset in an overtime match against Randall, who eventually won the Division II national tournament. But as you guys went into the offseason and with that, with that little bit sour taste in your mouth, again, referencing our conversations a couple of times of we keep using this phrase unfinished business, uh, how has that served as a motivator for the guys in the spring training and in their summer workouts uh, individually and then now coming into the preseason? You know, it was it, it was bitter. Um, it was a it was a tough it was a tough pill to swallow at the end of um, the season. But then we knew we had a spring season that that really counted for a little bit more than a typical spring season because of the way 2020 shaped up with COVID. So um, we just kind of re hit the reset button and tried to continue forward, um, knowing in the back of our head what what had just happened. Uh, we played some tough competition. So in the in the spring, we were able to play several NAIA teams, uh, the D3 region champions, and, and we competed and, and won a lot of those games. Uh, we looked very good. So that was encouraging forward. Um, and then the second side of that would be we recruited some top quality players. Um, and so the competition, you know, last year was good. This year, it's great. It's It's a tough spot to be in as a coach, but it's a great spot to be in. Yeah, absolutely. As we come into the season, you know, as you said, we added, uh, we just released the article uh, just a few days ago, actually, of uh, the new players that are joining the team. Uh, talk a little bit more about how that, 
I, I think you summed it up perfectly there, how we went from being an already really, really good team to now adding even more depth to our roster. Yeah, so, you know, we, we are seeking to recruit the same teams as a lot of Division One colleges in our, sorry, same players as a lot of Division One colleges in our area. And so, you know, we look for that level of quality when we go out and recruit. Uh, we look for a quality person as well that's going to fit within our team. And so um, we just, we have this philosophy. That's a great way to make a jump in your program. And, and we just, I mean, I'm looking at it as we have depth now, um, true depth, uh, where we can, we can have two different groups of 11 on the field and be at a very high level. So um, that, that was always, that's always been the goal since we, since I've been a part of the program two years ago, and, and we really started to try to build that culture of, of, you know, high level soccer. And I, I think we've achieved a, a good step forward in that this year with our recruits. As you guys look ahead, uh, final question here, coach, as we look ahead to this season, what's the thing that gets you the most excited about, uh, about the 2021 team? You know, we've got a really cool mix of guys, um, guys from all over the world, guys from all different backgrounds and watching these these young men kind of come together as family, which is our big philosophy. We want a family. Um, it has been awesome. So to see them compete together is kind of the cherry on top for me. I want to see them achieve goals that we've set as a team. Um, we've got some really, really tough games this year, um, games we're not supposed to win. And, and we're going to go try to win them. And so the beauty is just going to see how we face that adversity, the times we have successes, and then learning from, from the failures and moving forward and, and hopefully achieving our ultimate goal this year. Absolutely. September 4th is the home opener for the men's soccer team. And we'll have it, of course, at BJUBruins.com. Again, Coach, thanks so much for the time. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. Go Bruins.